What is up, everybody? What is up, everybody? My name is Jeff Lighty Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel and Victor Formation. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because we upload every single day. Now, Art Bryles, yes, Art Bryles was on the Jason Whitlock show, Fearless. And, you know, I have, I, I spoke about Jason Whitlock when he talked about Art Bryles in the context of Kobe Bryant. I didn't like that comparison. I said Jason Whitlock wasn't the most credible person when it comes to talking about Kobe Bryant, and I kind of showed why. But when it comes to this scenario, Jason did have an exclusive interview with Art Browse, and Art Browse kind of broke down more of his situation that took place at Baylor and his situation that took place at Grambling. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. We're going to talk about that right after the bumper. Stay tuned. What's goody, what's goody, what's goody, good people? Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, a like, share, and subscribe. So Art Browse, I'm not going to play the, the video because I'm in my technical difficulties. I'm in a different location, by the way, as well. But and I'm not sure if it's going to work. But I do want to say Art made some valid points. Now, all of these things that I spoke about were allegedly, and I understood why Baylor moved off of Art Browse. It was a bunch, it was a PR nightmare. It was just a complete disaster. I don't know if it was because Grambling didn't feel confident in the hire that they made. I don't know if they didn't feel confident in the research that they did. I don't know if they didn't feel confident in it in the words that Art said, but it was a complete disaster. And they seemed ill-equipped and ill-prepared for the backlash that they were going to get when hiring a guy like Art Browse. But Art Browse did something for the first time, not only since he's left Grambling, but honestly, since the whole thing went down at Baylor, this is the first time I've heard him do something like this, what he did with Jason Whitlock in six years. He was fired from Baylor six years ago, and he kind of broke down more of his situation at Grant at Baylor that ultimately was the reasoning why he left the Gremlin program and he kind of left the door open. He left the door open to a potential return to Gremlin. And I, and I want to hear from you all. Should Gremlin bring him back? And should Gremlin want him back? Now, let me go ahead. Let's let's talk about this interview. And like I said, I'm not going to play it because my, my technology is not right today, but I did want to talk about it. During the interview, Art Browse. Now, all the things that I've said previously were the things that were told to me. They were the things that I could find and the things that I could read. But Art spoke his piece. Art said that during his time, I don't know if it was over the course of his entire time or the course of a year or two, whatever, but there were 417 sexual assault cases at Baylor University. 417. Only five of them involved football players. This is all according to Art, by the way. This is all according to Art Browse. Only five of them involved or included a Baylor football player. So there were 412 other cases. So 417 total, five that involved Baylor football players. As we know, two of them, you know, multiple got charged. One is serving a 20-year prison bid, and another one was also went to jail. But others, like Sean Oakman, got acquitted. But there were 412 other cases. And so because there was a, this is all according to Art, because there was a campus-wide, a university-wide, and hell, quite honestly, this is probably just a college-wide thing. And Jason Whitlock made that point. This is a problem on, across every college campus. It's not just secluded to Baylor University, but across every single campus on every single university. That's just what happens at colleges. For those you attended, you understand that's what takes place. And so Baylor had a big, 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 big problem with this. And so it was easy for Baylor to pin, this is according to Art, by the way, it was easy for Baylor to pin the blame and to pin all of its issues on Art and the football team. It's like, hey, we as a university, this is according to Art once again, we as a university don't have a problem, but Art Browse and the football team do. 
The football guys are the ones that's calling the problems. The football guys are having the big ruckus, not the guys in these, you know, these fraternity houses on fraternity row or these guys that they're having these crazy parties or whatever. But the football guys with the black players is kind of what Art and Jason, this is how their conversation steered. So much so, Art even had dates, and I applaud him for this. He said so much so. He said in May of 2016, the day before his official termination, the officials at Baylor went to Indianapolis, the headquarters of the NCAA, and tried to make this case to the NCAA. Now, why would they go make that case to the NCAA? Well, you make that case to the NCAA because Art had just signed an extension, and I think he was owed roughly around $40 million on his contract. And so they go to make this case at the NCAA on, I think he said, May 25th. On the 26th, he was officially terminated, but the NCAA found that Art was not in, not involved. He, he had committed no violation, so therefore they had to pay him all of his money. And Art claims that Baylor actually cleared him. He said Baylor hired a law firm and a PR firm to kind of spin everything, but he claims that Baylor actually cleared him of not knowing of what was taking place and of not covering things up. This is, these are Art's words, not mine. And he said he has official documents to say that Baylor cleared him. Now, there's a couple of things in here. One, it's like, wow, if that's the truth, Art, you didn't do a great job of telling the public. Art Browse needs to do more interviews like this. Art Browse needs to go to a place like a first take, needs to go to a place like a Colin Cowherd, if they will allow him, needs to go to a place like a Undisputed with Shannon Sharp and clear his name if this is the case. Because for the last six years, the majority of people have felt like Art Browse was in the wrong. Art Browse was a part, not just an isolated incident, but a part of a campus-wide problem that took place at Baylor. We all understand that what happened at Baylor was wrong, whether it involved art com like completely or you know, complete, you know, completely or not. We knew that Baylor had a problem. But Baylor, with their head coach Dave Aranda, just won a Big 12 championship or we're in contention for a Big 12 championship. Their football program is completely fine now. But Art Browse still can't even take a job at Grambling. Because people like myself and others believe that he was directly involved in a campus-wide sexual assault scandal that involved over 400 cases of sexual assault at the University of Baylor. But Art Browse hadn't done enough PR on his own to clear his name. Think about this, guys. If somebody accuses you of covering up sexual assaults, covering up sexual assaults for your football players, wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think that you would be on the first thing smoking across any and every platform that will listen to you and that will give you a stage and give you a voice to speak your truth, to speak your peace? And Art made a valid point. Art and Jason both made valid points when they said this. Typically, I'm not going to say all the time, but typically, because all of this is alleged, it's he say, she say, whatever. But typically, but this is one thing that did stand out. Typically, does Baylor come out and say Art's lying? Art is saying, no, Baylor's lying, and I have proof, I have documents or whatever, whatever needs to be done. Uh, athletic director Travion Scott from Grambling said, yo, we did our due diligence, we did 10 days of research, we understand that it's higher, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But one thing that Art said that, that made a lot of sense, and that's something that, that I held on to, and that I was like, damn, you make a good point. He said, typically, now this is typically, typically when you're guilty and you're fired, you don't get paid because you get fired with cause, right? You, they show reasoning why they're firing you and that's why you don't get paid. Example, when I think of the Raiders and John Gruden, he had what? 60, 40 million dollars left on his contract or 60 million dollars left on his contract. The Raiders fired him with cause and therefore that's why they were trying to recuperate most of their money. Well, Baylor had to pay Art all 40, 41 million dollars left on his deal. Why? Because they weren't able to show cause. They fired him. They terminated his contract with no reasoning. If you're covering up sexual assault, 
And if the university finds that you're covering up sexual assault, you don't get the duration of your contract. That is enough to show cause and to terminate that contract with no money else being distributed. Now, one thing I pointed out in previous broadcasts, I was like, yo, the NCAA doesn't really have policies when it comes to sexual assault. So therefore, he was going to get cleared through the NCAA anyway. But if Art got paid the duration of his contract, which it's documented that he did, and if Art says he has documents that Baylor found that he had no knowledge of the sexual assaults that took place from the players on his team, then Art is a not guilty man. If all of this is true, now obviously this is all he says versus she says, he says versus he say, him versus the Baylor University. But Baylor University got their story out first. Baylor University got their story out wide. Baylor University got Art to look like the bad guy. And Art didn't defend himself in the six years he's been gone. Art has laid low. Art has not been on enough shows like Jason Whitlock's show, like First Take, like Undisputed, like Colin Cowherd. Hell, like the the uh, Victory Formation, the Black Boss Channel, right here with Jeff Lighty Jr. He hasn't done enough of that. If he did enough of that, and if he could show that he does have these documents that Baylor cleared him, and he, it is it is documented that he got paid his forty forty one million dollars left on his contract from Baylor. Then maybe you could put out some of these fires that come about when you get a job like the offensive coordinator at Grambling University. Maybe you're able to clear your name and maybe you're able to coach college football once again because Art said it in his interview with Jason Whitlock that he lives for coaching. That when he got hired at Grambling, he actually worked at Grambling. I knew it for was at least a week he was there before he actually left. He said it was actually two weeks he was there before he ended up having, before it was made public to everyone. That he got emotional when he got to coach young men again. Well, Art, if you had no idea that sexual assault was taking place, players at your football team at Baylor, then you deserve to coach young men again. You do. That's just my, that's just my humble opinion. And yours could be different. But if he is actually able to prove that he had no idea that his players were committing sexual assault, that out of the 417 cases, only five cases took place with Baylor football players? If this is true, now once again, this has to be true. This is just his word versus their word. And there's documents up here, allegedly, that could go either way. But I think he would deserve a second chance at coaching. And I think Baylor could reconsider bringing Art Browse back. Now, will they? Probably not. Should they? Eh, I don't know. But should he be allowed to coach football once again if he is able to prove that he was cleared of any wrongdoing, not by the NCAA, to hell with the NCAA, but cleared of any wrongdoing by Baylor themselves? Then absolutely. That is something to think about. That was an interesting interview. If you get a chance, watch Art Browse on Jason Woodlock. He was on there for two hours, and they broke down essentially everything. But those were the biggest takeaways that I took from it. Uh, A.D. Travion Scott of, Bay, of Grambling said they did their homework, and they understood who they were getting when they hired Art Browse. I think A.D. Travion Scott, Hugh Jackson, and those guys didn't prepare enough for Art didn't prepare enough for the backlash that they were going to get by hiring Art Browse. And I think A.D. Travion Scott and Hugh Jackson should have gotten in front of this instead of playing catch up. And I think if they wanted to validate the hiring of Art Browse, which most of the Graham fam was all for, by the way, Graham fam listening, you guys were all for, you guys were, were, were fans of this hire. I think they should have had Art on a media tour going around to these shows that I've listed before, include, and then also Black-owned shows like ours, like Roland Martin's. 
and talk about why he was cleared, what took place, just like he did with Jason. But he needs to continue to do that, or he should have continued to do that as the offensive coordinator of Grambling. And then that way, his story could be told. If and only if his version of what took place is true. So those are my two cents on it. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below on Art Browse, on the Grambling situation. It was a complete disaster, but Art Brow, it could have, the disaster could have been avoided if they did this right, if they did this better initially. There's no way you go back and try to redo this because now you look dysfunctional. Now you look like you don't know what you're doing. Now you look like it's a clown show. It's more about the coaches and the entertainment and the circus that is all of this instead of the actual football and what we should be excited for, not only this spring, but also during the fall. So you can't double back on this. I'll be, although Art left the door open to doubling back on this. But man, oh man, hearing him speak, I was like, yo. Maybe he was exonerated, not by the NCAA, but by the university. That makes a difference because that means he didn't condone this type of behavior when the narrative in any kind of documents that you can find online kind of depicts that he did condone it. But if he actually didn't, that makes a huge difference. And that even made my stance change. Leave your comments down below. Hit that thumbs up button. Once again, my name is Jeff Lighty Jr. with the Black Boss Channel and Victory Formation. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and the Black Boss Channel right there on the screen. Thank you guys, and I will see you next time. Peace.